Should I always share my competing offer details? No. And in this video, we are solely going to focus in on how to time things because there's just not a lot of data out there on this item. And while some things will be outside of our control, there are just a few strategies that we can utilize that will really help us make the best decisions. So item one, hold off. So let's go right back into it. Just because you have a competing offer, it doesn't mean you should share the details. And why? Well, let's paint an example. So let's say you get an offer from Amazon and you're also at the offer stage with Google, but Google's just a little bit behind. And we instantly provide those Amazon details, but it was lower than Google was even going to offer you initially. Now Google has a data point. They have this competing offer that's lower than what they want to give. And now it may not give us as much flexibility to negotiate. Now we've lost our opportunity to anchor and we would have been better off with no competing offer at all. Remember, this is a data point. So we want to use this data point incredibly strategically. So just hold off. If you're not sure that that competing offer is absolutely going to benefit you, slow down the pace a little bit and let's dive right into that process. So item two is the when, and there's really two scenarios. So let's get into that first scenario. We're unsure. In this case, we want to start the negotiation process irrespective of the other offer. This will help you determine whether or not you're going to want to introduce that competing offer or not, because now you're going to have all the data. You're going to have that Amazon offer. You're going to have that Google offer. And now you can say, okay, if I start negotiating these offers, maybe one at the end of the day can drive up the other. And if your recruiter starts pushing for those details, which a good recruiter should do, just simply tell them, look, I'm just waiting for a few updated numbers from the other company, I will share them with you as soon as I can. And this will slow down the process and absolutely can feel counterproductive. But oftentimes we can drive those initial numbers, that initial benchmark up, and it ends up becoming an even better negotiation for us. So always in negotiation, patience is a virtue. So scenario two is maybe Amazon comes in first and we know it's a couple levels higher than Google. We know it's going to be much higher or it could just be the case with a startup or any other company. In this case, I want you to follow these exact steps. You share the verbal offer with the competing company, let's say Google in this instance, and they're going to ask for it in writing. They're always going to take that step. So simply say, look, I'm still negotiating. These are not the final numbers, but I wanted to get ahead of it and really share this information with you. And again, they might push back, but you can simply state, I'd love for you to take this back to the compensation team so we can start the negotiation process on our end. If they want to hold off, they can, but ultimately sharing those numbers in advance acts and works like an anchor. We've presented a really high number and now in their mind, they know they're going to have to pay you a lot to get you in the door. So it has the same kind of functionality as an anchor. So let's quickly segue and talk about this in writing item. Many candidates get concerned by two items. They signed an NDA, which means they can't or are not supposed to share any information. And maybe the recruiter or their point of contact is saying, hey, look, don't share this data or information. I say share. There are no trade secrets in a job offer. It's just a job offer. And these companies specifically say that so you can't leverage the job offer to help you get more money with another company. Saying you cannot share the offer is what's best for them, not for you. Now, if you feel the moral obligation to not share the details, ultimately that's your decision. But are you going to be legally held to this? Are they going to find out that you shared the offer? Nope. And I actually tried to Google and find a single court case where this scenario has happened and I could not find one. Why? Because it never happens. Item three, timing. You're probably saying to yourself, Jeff, this is all great, but rarely does the timing align. And you're right. There are so many items though that we can utilize to work the timing in our favor. And so the first step is 
early and often. If you keep your recruiter slash point of contact in the loop from the very beginning stages, let them know that you're interviewing at other companies and update them. After maybe you go on site, you got some positive feedback, that company's giving you some indications that an offer might be coming, just continue to let them know every single time. If you hide all these details and then one day, boom, you pop it on them and you're like, hey, I got a competing offer, they might not be able to help you at that point. And for some of these bigger companies like a Google who moves really slow, you've given up the opportunity because you held that information back. Now, do you need to share all the company details and all the information? No, not right away. You can share when you feel comfortable, but keep them in the loop. Second, this is a tricky one on the timing piece is holding off the company that goes first. So let's go back to that Amazon example. Let's say Amazon comes first, they come in on a Monday and they say, hey, we need you to decide by Friday. Sometimes I've seen some advice to say, hey, I need a couple weeks. That's a really long timeline with some ambiguity. I say be more specific. Wait until about Wednesday evening, Thursday morning and message them and say, hey, I'm still waiting on this other offer. I just need to delay until midweek next week. So you give shorter delays and you're more specific. Maybe you say next Wednesday and continue to take this process where you do little pushes. It's usually seen as more favorable. You're keeping them in the loop more often. So this is my strong recommendation. Just continue to push out in shorter buckets. Usually they'll respond better to that approach. Now, the third one, I get this question a ton in my live sessions is accepting then rejecting. <sighs> this happens, right? And so should you burn a bridge? In some cases, yes, you should. So let's say you're working at ABC company. You get this great offer from Amazon. It's way more money. It's a great position. It's everything you're looking for, but you still haven't quite finished the process with Google. Sometimes we just need to accept that offer. We've pushed the deadline, pushed the deadline, and you still need to see the Google process through. And maybe Google comes in as your top choice and ultimately they decide they want to hire you. If Google is your dream job, company, manager, location, accept their offer and then communicate to Amazon that unfortunately you won't be able to join their organization. Maybe you're two weeks in, maybe you're a month in and you need to quit. You are going to absolutely burn a bridge, but you need to do what's best for you in the long run. And again, not everybody's going to agree with this approach, moral obligation to do what's right for that company. But these companies will lay you off when things happen. They have hiring freezes, economic things. So I would just say, really look out for yourself as much as you can. Again, I understand that not everybody will agree with this approach, but sometimes we need to burn that bridge to just make sure we don't give up that initial really good opportunity, but we keep that other better opportunity in the background. So item four, I want to talk a little bit about the process. Now, ideally, these two organizations increase their offers and we're getting them to kind of go back and forth against each other, but we can't do that for forever. So maybe one or two back and forth, and then this is the time where you need to make the decision, pick the company, and then do that final push and say, if we can get to X, I'm going to decline the other offer and join you. And that last little push can end up being 5,000 more a year, 10,000 more a year. So do that final push, but you're going to have to know when to stop. Candidly, this is when a negotiation coach could be beneficial for you, but just something I want you to consider. Also, sometimes we find ourselves in these scenarios where we have more than two competing offers. I want you to keep all the companies involved as long as you possibly can, because we simply just don't know what's happening behind the scenes. Maybe there's a potential up level. Maybe they're really fighting for you in the background. And so we don't want to let these companies go too soon hold off as long as you can. At some point, you're going to have to start letting these companies go. But I've seen cases where we didn't think we were going to pick that company, but then things happen behind the scenes and it ends up being the best comp. We really like the manager. We really like the organization, etc. Item five, everything else. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't share a few other tips and tricks that I want you to consider, specifically three items. Number one is manager. 
For me, this is the number one item that I'm looking for. You can work at the best company in the world for this great position, but your manager relationship is typically the make or break. And can we really uncover all this before we start? No, but if you're already seeing red flags and you've only spoken with them once or twice, that's probably a sign that you're not gonna have a great relationship and it may be worth considering the other offer. Second is brand. What is the value of a brand? Millions of dollars sometimes. So think about what the brand will do for you, not only immediately, but in the long run, brand is critical. And some of the brands like Amazon and Google that we've talked about today will do wonders for your career in the long term. Lastly, level and title. I've talked a lot about this. Level and title is ego. Never make a decision based on a higher level or higher title. Pick compensation over title every single time, then weigh all the necessary factors. I really hope this video helps. Good luck.